Hey, welcome back. So we're going to start tutorial two today, which is taking what we did with GarageBand in the last tutorial, that audio recording, and putting it in to a slideshow of pictures that were taken during the activity so we get a really good idea of what an IG activity looks like. We get the authentic sounds coupled with authentic pictures that were taken. Now in order to do this, you're going to need to use another program called iMovie. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that audio and we're going to import it into iMovie with the pictures that we had. So that's essentially what this tutorial will go over. Now, I keep my iMovie app in a different folder than I keep my GarageBand app, and I keep it in a folder called Picture Slash Video. Yours might be in a different spot. So I'm going to tap on the folder labeled Pictures Slash Video, and then you'll see my iMovie is a purple icon with a little camera inside of it. I will go ahead and tap iMovie. When, I, when iMovie opens up, it's very similar to the workspace that opens up for GarageBand, except we're working with video now. And you'll see that I've been up to a lot of mischief uh, for my 8th grade classes and also timing my son breaking a land speed record in cross country. But we need to create a new file for this particular activity. And the way to do it, very similar to how we did it in GarageBand, we're going to tap the plus sign. So I'm going to tap the plus sign. When I do that, and that plus sign was in the upper right hand corner as you saw, when I do that, I get two options. I can create a movie trailer, which is pretty cool, actually, and we may get to that in another tutorial because it's, it's a cool way of showing activities really quickly. Or I can create a movie, and even though we are going to be creating a slideshow, the movie feature of iMovie works well to do this. So we're going to tap on Movie. There we go. When we tap on Movie, we get a variety of different themes that we can apply to the movie. And if you scroll from right to left, I believe, is that right? I think so. You can see that there are just a number of different themes you can use. But to keep it simple, I like to use the modern theme. And so you can see if you tap on the different themes, you get a bigger picture of what they look like. But I'm going to scroll back left, and I'm going to tap on modern. You can even get a preview of how modern looks and you can do that on your own time if you want by hitting that play button underneath the big image. But for simplicity, we're just going to use that and we're going to hit create movie in the upper right corner. When I do that, another workspace opens up and this is the workspace where you get to see all the different pieces that you can now work with within the movie or for our purposes, slideshow that you're designing. We're not going to work with video because we didn't shoot video. I have video at my disposal because I have video on my iPad. But we're not going to work with video. We're going to work with photos. And if you look in the upper right-hand side of this workspace, you'll see the word video, then you'll see the word photos, and then you'll see the word audio. We're going to work with photos, so we're going to tap on photos. When we do that, the iPad is, or iMovie is pulling in all the different photos on my particular iPad. You likely will not have this many photos. And in a later tutorial, we're going to talk more about photos and how you can categorize those photos. But we're going to keep this really simple. And I'm going to use, I am going to import some pictures into iMovie that I took actually way back in 2010 on a trip we made to Yosemite. So I'm going to tap on, you'll see it there, it's July 8th, 2010, and I put a few pictures in there, just six of them, I believe. I'm going to tap on that, and I get to now see the six pictures that I've got. And it's very simple to import these pictures into uh, the current file that I'm working with. I just need to tap on them. When I tap on a picture, it drops into a timeline, as you'll see. Tap on the second picture, same thing, right next door. Third picture, fourth picture, and so on. And so on. 
And I'm really glad that there's no pictures of me in here because I've aged rapidly during this time period. So tried to keep those out so as not to horrify anyone. Now we've got all of our pictures. And depending on how many pictures you took of the IG activity, you could have a lot more. Hopefully you have more than just six. But maybe all you got were six quality pictures just because you were playing around with this. And that would be fine as well. If I scroll back to, if I scroll, if I put my finger down and move it to the right, I can move, or I can basically put my picture, my, my finger, not my picture, on the timeline now where these pictures have dropped to, and you can see I can just move along with them as I'm moving my finger. This is not happening, happening magically. So I've got my pictures. Now I need to give this file that we have created a name. It has been given a generic name. iMovie will give it a generic name of my movie. And depending on how many movies you have, it will drop a number next to that. And you can see if you look in the upper left-hand corner, this file is generically titled My Movie 2. I'm going to change that by tapping on the arrow in the far upper left-hand side of the screen. When I tap on that, we go, we get a big, we get a screen opening up that has a little snapshot of the movie and in all capital letters to the right of that snapshot it says my movie too. Well, I want to change that so this has more meaning to me and hopefully you'll change yours so it has more meaning to you. And the way I do that is I tap on the all caps title. When I do that, it shrinks it to lowercase and uppercase and then there's an X next to the flashing cursor. I'm going to tap on the X I do that, it just takes out that generic name, allows me to type a new one. And I'm going to label it similarly or title it the same as we titled the audio track we did on the last tutorial, which will be sample one. And then I will tap done. And now in my mind, I'm going to know that these two things go together. The audio we made and now sample one. And we've created a new movie. You'll see that there's a date that shows us when it's been modified. It shows us the duration. Right now, it's only 31 seconds. iMovie, by default, will keep a particular image up uh, a default amount of time, which, which works well um, for the slideshow. Um, underneath that, we could just simply uh, hit what looks like a play button to play the movie. We could export it, which we really don't need to do. Or we could, if we were really dissatisfied, and I did not like Yosemite any longer, I could just dump it in the garbage can. But we're going we're gonna to keep it right now. And we're going to go back to the actual workspace of iMovie. The, not our particular workspace for our movie, but just the generic one which shows all the different things that we've been working with. We do that by hitting the left, or that arrow in the upper left-hand corner. When we do that, we see all the different movies again, and we can see our sample one film. So we're done with that. Now we actually have to go back to GarageBand so we can get our audio into this slideshow. And that's done, obviously, by hitting the home button on your iPad. So hit the home button. That takes us back out. And I'm going to tap to the right of the folder, gets me back out looking at all my apps. I'm going to find GarageBand, go into GarageBand, and just like we did on the last tutorial, we see the GarageBand workspace. I want to export sample one into the movie we just created. And the way you do it is you tap select in the upper right hand corner, and you can see all of the different projects shaking you now they are afraid I'm going to choose them or whatever and I'm going to select sample one by tapping on it and I get a blue highlight around it letting me know that I've put that one into play and then I'm gonna hit the box with the arrow pointing upwards in the upper left hand corner and again my options screen comes up or options menu and now I'm gonna hit open in which is in the second row down third column over. I think that's how columns and rows work, but I'm a historian, so who knows. Tap that. So we've given it a composer name, an album name. 
I want to again select highest quality because I want this audio to sound really good because let's face it, I'm in love with the sound of my voice. After we've got all of these things done, and again, you could change any of these things by tapping on something. You may not want Molly Teller. You might have decided you want to change the artist name, whatever. But if we're happy with this, hit done and then hit share. When we hit share, it will export it. Now, it's going to take longer, most likely, than it just did to export yours because it's going to be longer than the sample I made of my voice haranguing you um, on the last tutorial. But we can see a sub-menu pops up, and we are now going to tap Open in iMovie, the first selection. When we do that, voila! What's happening now is we go back into iMovie, but we have a sub-menu that opens up. That sub-menu would actually allow you to use the audio file in a totally new movie. That's your first option at the top underneath Select Project. Or it will allow you to put this audio into what's known as last edited. And if you look at this sub menu, you'll see it says last edited near the, near the top of the select project screen. And then underneath that, it says sample one. Well, we know we just named our iMovie project sample one, and that's where we want that audio to go. So we're just gonna tap sample one. We're gonna see a miraculous spinning thing, and boom, what looks like magic, we have just now witnessed our audio file dropping beneath those images that we had just put on an iMovie timeline in um, iMovie just a few minutes ago. And now what we've got is, we've got that those pictures, but we also have audio, the audio that we made in the last tutorial. And that audio now goes along with the pictures. And if I hit play underneath the really large picture of the trees there, I just tap play, the metronome just counts in for just a second, and then it stops. And now we are recording what I am saying, unfortunately, but hopefully you will now be able to record some interesting interactions. And not So there you can see it. We now have the audio going along with those pictures. And you can see the pictures last a few seconds. There are ways to make those pictures um, last longer. You can tap on one of the pictures. A yellow line appears around it. And you have the ability to, when that yellow line appears, let's see here, to change. You can drag out, hold it down, and lengthen the amount of time that that picture stays. Or you can shrink it just by holding your finger down after you tap on it. You can do that for any image. I'm just holding my finger down on the picture now and dragging left or right. You can see that we have, you can see there are some changes happening to the audio underneath the blue. That's because we only have a, the audio was not that long. And therefore, when we did that, it, uh, it can only make the audio last so long. We could just view what we've done within iMovie. That's pretty simple to do. If we hit the, if we tap the arrow in the upper left hand corner, it takes us back out to the workspace of this particular file. And if we hit the, or if we tap on the play button, that's just below duration, we can play this slideshow within iMovie. But you may not want to always go into iMovie. You may just want to do it in a more simpler way. So there is a way to export this movie so that it can be viewed just by going into your photos, which is a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. And what we would do is just above the, um, or just to the left of the garbage can in the middle there, we can see that square pointing outward. If we hit that, it will give us the option to save this video so that it can be viewed outside of iMovie. And what we would do is, in the second row down, we would tap on Save Video. When we do that, we get a, a sub-menu popping up that asks us how big do we want the movie to be. And really, for the purposes of watching this thing on an LCD, 720p is fine. 1080p is, is the highest resolution you can get. But just to make this go somewhat faster, I'm going to hit HD 720p. I'll tap that. When I do that, 
iMovie tells me it's copying this movie to my camera roll on the actual within the camera um, settings or within the um, photo portion of your iPad. So it tells me it's been copied to the camera roll. I tap OK. And then I'm just going to leave iMovie and I'm going to verify that it in fact is in my photos section. I just hit the home button on the iPad and I actually within the folder that I have on my iPad where iMovie is located, I've also got a photos folder. <clears throat> and so I'm going to tap on photos. When I do that, my camera roll is actually the first thing that I can see there. If I tap on camera roll, it shows me all the different things that are in my camera roll. And if you look down near the bottom, you can see the, those lovely pictures of the trees there. That is the movie. And if I were to tap on that, that movie would start playing along with, uh, or not the movie, but the slideshow along with the audio. So there you have it. We took an audio file where we actually recorded audio from an IG activity using GarageBand. We then exported that audio file into iMovie or imported it into iMovie. We took some pictures that we had taken of the activity and we placed those on a timeline in iMovie with our audio track and we've done something that I believe is a better way of fostering authentic interaction than just rolling video because as we said at the very beginning of the tutorial number one you've got a video camera rolling it tends to stifle, stifle authentic conversation. So I hope you've learned something here. Please don't hesitate to shoot me an email at any time. Um, Gus Teller at me.com if you have any questions about what's gone on in tutorial one, tutorial two. And I look forward to teaching you more.